Hello, my soccer universe. Boy, 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 the giant killing is huge at the AFCON this time around. Uh, we have three major nations already out and it almost got the hosts as well. It was right on there. They were. It was a disaster already what happened to them, but they're staring right at it. And when there are giant killings, there are also some big surprises happening. We already talked last time around about um, the Equatorial Guinea and Cape Verde, who are not that big surprises anymore. But Mauritania ousting Algeria has to count as one of the biggest surprises that the AFCON has ever seen. That's a team that has never even led in an AFCON game. And with the first lead, they pull off the huge upset. So major, major, major news there. I think it's also surprising then Angola winning the group and Angola team that hasn't been in the AFCON for quite a while. Uh, and, you know, also Mali, while being a notable name, they never have made it to a World Cup again, winning a group. So uh, really, really gripping action. I have, have to say, especially uh, the groups A to D, the, fin the finales were absolutely edge of your seat stuff yesterday was then a major downer i have to say it kind of went always a, it hit a climax uh in with groups b and c and then went a teeny bit down afterwards but it was still major 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 fun to do that Okay, I would say we'll run through the results. We'll see then. Uh, you'll see also what this means to the standings. We see what this means then for the uh, bracket, how it shapes up, who will play whom. And also we look at favorites and when actually the next rounds will be played. And we'll start right in Group A, where it was all about it could the uh, Cote d'Ivoire finally, you know, make up for the loss to Nigeria to secure their place in the next round because a loss would put them in really really bad shape although if it's not too big it would be fine and they really played forward try to create and with their first um uh, at attempt in Sue, who has been one of the stories of this afcon put equatorial guinea ahead and that completely sent the cote in tailspin yes they had two clear um, offside goals disallowed in, in between but they're then trying to throw everything forward in the meantime, Nigeria had already taken a 1-0 lead over lowly Guinea-Bissau, which kind of meant that they are safely through on 7 points. And so, uh, you know, they didn't extend themselves too much. They also had two offset goals allowed through Osimen uh, and Alna. But it was all about the cultivar. Can they get the equalizer? Because a point, at least a point, and you more or less secure that, that they're moving on. It is not happening. They throw literally everything forward. Bring across to Konate, Boga. <sighs> Running the other counter, second shot and goal, Gane makes it 2 0 for Equatorial Guinea. And then so shortly after, Nsue, a guy who plays at Intercity CF in the third Spanish tier. Is now the top scorer at the AFCON, makes it 3 0 and to add insult to injury, Bui, Buila, a 4 0. As I said, with a loss, probably the Cote d'Ivoire were not 100% guaranteed, but it would not have looked that bad. But now you had the goal difference there as well, and that put you in real, real trouble. And uh, of course, the coach got duly fired even before they knew whether they were moving on or not. So, major catastrophe and kind of a downer in the country already. Uh, because you expected more, your whole 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 thing. It not less drama by any stretch was then in Group B, where uh, we knew Ghana need to get something going, Egypt needed something going, Cape Verde already through, but all the other teams had still a chance. <laughs> so it was Cape Verde already through, Egypt on two points, and Ghana and Mozambique on one point each, meaning a win secures you. The next round for sure and if Egypt also uh, if Egypt doesn't win which because they had to play uh, K-Cup Verde you wouldn't really uh, you you wouldn't really worry and it went well for Ghana they got a penalty early on Jordan Ayo converts it's 1-0 however Mozambique gave it their all and really put Ghana on the back foot a Ghana team that actually looked quite well against Egypt Egypt on, on, on the other hand played a Cape Verde B team of course a Cape Verde B, B, B team and were mostly controlling the game and creating chance, chances again finishing let them down and similar to Equatorial Guinea Cape Verde score with the first shot on goal but this was a brilliant goal through Benji Mol uh, you know taking up turning and uh, putting it in just before the half 
So Egypt looking at an early exit while Ghana is seemingly moving on. Mozambique though came back, as did Egypt. Egypt get the equalizer shortly after the half uh, through Trezeguet, who had come on at halftime. And at this point, we have not even talked about the Mo Salah drama, which probably I should, should, should address now as well. Uh, Mo Salah it was said, first said is only for two days out. Then suddenly you hear from Liverpool yeah, that he's returned to Liverpool because it's a more serious injury. Uh, and he has to, uh, to get the best treatment there. Uh, which of course meant everyone in Egypt in the kind of a raucous because why is he going back to Liverpool? He should be with the team. Uh, turns out that the Egypt the Egyptian FA had signed off on it on the, on the grounds that they don't have a, pr a proper treatment in where they are moving to in the Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, so a whole lot of stuff about almost nothing. The thing is that Mo Salah is most likely out for the AFCON. May make it for the final. Not 100% because I'm not sure if Egypt will make the final, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's go back. Ghana is leading. Egypt have a point. They are sitting now three points in third place. Uh, it could be enough, could, uh, which would be enough uh, to qualify them. However, as I said, Mozambique really gave it all, created chances, and then they gave up a relatively stupid penalty. It was a hand hands penalty, and uh, they also kept arguing a little bit too much about it, because it was actually pretty clear that this was a handball. Uh, and Jordan Ayo also steps up again and makes it 2-0, and you think Ghana cruising through and extinguishing the bad spirits from last time, time, time around. But as I said, this Ghana team, I don't know how they made it to the World Cup. I mean, we know how, how they made it to the World Cup uh, with a relatively lucky win over Nigeria on aggregate goals. But we're going into stoppage time and Mozambique get a penalty and it is 2-1. Literally at the same time, Mustafa Mohamed, after Theresa Gay assist, lobs the ball over the keeper and Egypt having a 2-1 lead. Egypt are through. They are celebrating. However... Was it offside or was it not offside? It was the handball. It was a lengthy VAR review. In the meantime, Mozambique equalized against Ghana. At that moment, Ghana are out. And after the Egyptian goal is finally given, Teixeira very quickly equalizes for the Cape Verde Islands. However, it is enough for Egypt, who with only three points and three draws, actually secure a second spot while Ghana and Mozambique are out. And to be honest, Mozambique looked much better than Ghana in that one, and that would have been another surprise. But at least Egypt are through, and we may see Mosala again at the AFCON. Now, going over, that was already a whole lot on, um, on, on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, didn't let, let up as well. I mean, Guinea, Senegal, the story is quickly told. Sen Senegal win 2-0. Uh, second in Jaya let, let on make 2-0. Yes, Guinea uh, threw because they had, had, had already four points. So this was relatively inconsequential. However, the Gambia against Cameroon, that was a head-to-head -head because uh, both were out with a draw. So you needed a win. And the game was a, a big stalemate for most time uh, until Toko Ekambi breaks the deadlock, 56th minute, it's 1-0 Cameroon. And at that point it was deserved, so, but then the Gambia came back and turned the game around. Uh, Jalo gets an equalizer and then Kole in the 85th minute put Gambia in the lead. You think there is the big sensation is coming. The problem is off the kickoff, they were celebrating too much. Uh, Gomez deflects the ball in, in, in his own net and it's 2-2 again. Again, both teams are out. It doesn't help. However, Wu for Cameroon makes in stoppage time the 3-2. And then uh, to top, to top it off, Sané actually got an equalizer again. But this was hand, hand of ghost of the way he punches it in, 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 into the net. But it tells you how close this was for Cameroon. Yes, Cameroon are moving on. They're even moving on in second place. But they were so close of being eliminated with five minutes to go, minus plus stoppage time. They were out. The Gambia really had them. They put them really on the arm, on the back foot. I feel a little bit sorry for the Gambia because they were such a good, nice story already la last time around. This time, I think they probably also could have deserved more. But in, in the end, it's the three big nations. And may I just say how much I love Guinea's kit. Not necessarily the jersey, and I will shoot an African jersey review uh, uh, relatively soon. 
but the red green uh, red yellow green outfit is just glorious i i just have to have, I have to say it. same thing goes for the gambia by by the way in red blue and green okay those were the high dramas now another high drama but much less goals uh, was happening than in group d where angola actually beat burkina faso uh, which i didn't expect i mean angola um have been a good team but I thought the Burkina Faso is better. Although we are Burkina Faso, we have to be honest. They got a relatively lucky win over Mauritania with a late penalty. They beat Algeria. Uh, uh, they uh, only drew against all, all Algeria because of cool control. So it was not coming as a total surprise. Uh, but I didn't quite expect it. Mabululu gave Angola a 1-0 lead. And then Zini in stoppage time makes it 2-0. Angola win the group ahead of Burkina Faso. But the true drama was between Mauritania and Algeria, where Algeria had all the possession in the world and are still being outshot by Mauritania, who just set tight and convert the one chance that they have through the lie in the 37th minute. And I said it already in the intro. This is a Mauritania side that has never even led at the AFCON. Never even had a lead at the AFCON. And they're playing against two-time AFCON winners, Algeria, a known quantity that was already embarrassed last half time around when they, as the defending champions, also crashed out last place. Algeria, I don't know what is hap ha 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 happening. This, uh, this is a truly potent side. If it's and I even think that um, the coach Regagi is is a good one because he actually put them on a real run. How this went sour, I have no idea. Uh, I mean, he could be uh, like a Riyad Mahrez, a uh, Bentele, but as Islam Slimani. Uh, the problem is what I hear is that um, most Algerians are really fed up with the big name players, but that is also typically if you do not show up. Algeria are out again. And to me, this is probably the biggest surprise so far of the entire AFCON. Yesterday then, South Africa, Tunisia. Uh, Tunisia needed also a win. Second biggest surprise I have, have to say, because this is a, a group that was well in the reach for Tunisia, that they only get two points out of this one. Uh, again, not bringing down South Africa, they needed the win. Can't get can, can, Tunisia out in last place to boot. Uh, and then Mali against Namibia play also out the nil the draw, which was convenient for both of them. Namibia move on with their sensational win over Tunisia. And to add to the whole, whole thing is uh, moving on in third place behind South Africa. South Africa beat them. And South Africa is actually punished for that by having a much tougher opponent. The winner of Group F as Namibia are only playing the winner of Group D, which is Angola. And that's a neighboring duel as well. And then uh, the last group, Tanzania DRC. Only play out a nil-nil draw. Uh, the DRC uh, cannot really break down or is not in the interest because they know the draw is enough. And Morocco do a huge favor to the Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, this is probably the, uh, another thing I've always been looking. How are, are they doing? Can they still make it? It was basically if Morocco win, they are through. Morocco get them in. They create chances. They cannot convert it. Hakim Ziyech with the first shot on goal gets the win. Uh, Zambia then came close a few times with some chances. But, you know, you also have to put the ball on the net in order to be able to uh, score. And so Morocco win the group and Zambia and Tanzania are out. The Cote d'Ivoire just sneak into the next round. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I think it's always good to have the host there, especially since they're having quite the interesting opponent coming up. So uh, we saw already the... Uh, the uh, results for uh, for the group so let's look straight at the bracket we start on top we have uh one absolute classic nigeria against cameroon i mean it doesn't get bigger than that uh in africa i i would say although both teams are not in their prime uh you see uh nigeria would be the favorite then we have angola against namibia total outsider duel Cape Verde against Mauritania, also total outside duel. Uh, Mauritania have shown that they can hang with the big boys, but I think Cape Verde showed enough that I would favor them there. Morocco against South Africa, that's the matchup I, I, I just talked about. Uh, should be Morocco, but South Africa are uh, hard to break down to, to us, and they have beaten Morocco recently. So uh, that, that I put an upset alert there. 
I would do the same for Egypt against the DRC. I think the DRC have not been convincing, but Egypt also not. Egypt have been dominating the games, but they have shown some defensive frailties, which I could see that the DRC is uh, taking advantage of. So also slight upset alert. Ecuador, Guinea against Guinea, so the duel of, 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 of the Guineas. What Ecuador and Guinea have shown so far is that they should be the favorites in this one. Uh, Mali Burkina Faso is not only a duel of two teams that I actually really have huge sympathies for, it's also two travel teams and also neighboring countries. Not only with each other, but also a neighboring countries of the Côte d'Ivoire. So I think this is an open one. Uh, both teams have not been really convincing overall. Uh, but I would give it to Mali, this one. And then Senegal against Côte d'Ivoire. I would love to give an upset alert, but what the Coco Diva have been showing would be a major, major upset if they can oust the defending champions. Uh, having said that, let's look at the expected bracket. So always the fav favorites moving on. So we would have Nigeria, Angola in the quarters. We would have the, uh, Cape Verde against Morocco. And that is one where I put a major upset alert there because I could, could see this happening. Same thing for Egypt against Equatorial Guinea. We could have really two absolute outsiders in the semi-finals, although one would expect the big name to go through. Then uh, if Mali move over to Burkina Faso, they will face Senegal. I, I think Senegal look really, really solid. To, to me, that they're, uh, they're not great, but they were also not great at the last AFCON, but they look most convincing. So I would see Senegal moving on from there. Then we would have a rematch. If it goes by form, as I said, Ecuador, Guinea and Cape Verde, I think are capable of making it to the to, semis. To, to um, Nigeria against Cape Verde. Hmm. I like the offensive power of Nigeria. They have shown also some defensive prowess. We gotta, we gotta see. However, if Morocco moves through, I think, yeah, it would be, would be an open one. I actually think that Nigeria have a chance, although I would probably see more Morocco going through. They have overall the higher quality, the more balanced squad. Having the, 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 the thing is, there's not really one, one team where I said they are really looking good, maybe except for Senegal. Uh, and if Egypt moves through against Senegal, it's a replay of the last AFCON final. That would be great as well. Senegal have too much for that. So we still look at the Morocco-Senegal final for now, which is also reflected in the overall fav favorites. Yes, Morocco probably have the slightly easier path by the ratings. It is not easy. I think that the Cape Verde Islands are seriously under underrated and even South Africa is not that easy for them. Senegal on the other side. I actually think I like Senegal's chances when I just look by gut, gut feeling a little bit better than Morocco's. Uh, but the model, of course, is based on ratings and there Morocco has it much easier. Egypt and Nigeria because they have a relatively clear path to the semis, relatively. But you know, there are some other realities as well. When will the next round be played? Well, it starts with Angola and Namibia, and then at the same time as Milan is playing Bologna, unfortunately, Nigeria play Cameroon, uh, box office stuff, although I don't expect a great game. Though, although the last time they played in 2019, this was a great game. Ecuador, the duel of the Guineas, and Egypt DRC followed then on Sunday. Um, I think this, especially Egypt DRC, sounds like a really interesting one. Uh, a big one would be Senegal against Cote d'Ivoire. I think this is must watch um, in, in, in a way. I personally like Mali against Burkina Faso. As I said, those are two teams that I like a whole lot. And let's see who, who will move on. In any case, that was it from me from the AFCON group stages. Take a little breather. We have two days off. So it starts on Saturday, on Saturday and until Tuesday. Uh, and then we can get back into the AFCON action. And now it gets really, really exciting. I'm expecting actually quite a few penalty shootouts as well, especially when the smaller nations are involved, because they will probably be a little bit more defensive. In any case, please let me know how you have enjoyed the AFCON so far. Uh, who do you think will win it? As I said, my model says Morocco. I still feel very much Senegal and I could see Nigeria making a run. Just putting it out there right now. Any case, give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you soon about more uh, stuff in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.